In this video, we will go over the derivation for a very useful circuit called a voltage divider. So a voltage divider, as you saw, is a circuit made from two resistors, which has an input voltage V in and an output voltage V out measured between the two resistors. And the lower resistor is connected to ground. We're going to call these resistors R1 and R2. So our goal here is to find an equation for V out as a function of V in R1 and R2. If you'd like to challenge yourself, you can pause the video here and see if you can derive that equation yourself and then come back and I will walk through the derivation in case you could not figure it out. So in order to do this derivation, you will need to be familiar with things like Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's curtain voltage laws, and what this ground symbol means. So if you are jumping into this playlist in the video in the middle and you're not sure what those things mean, you might want to go back and watch some of the earlier videos in this series before you attempt this yourself. So again, our goal here is to find V out as a function of Vn R1 and R2. And you notice that V out is also the same thing as the voltage drop over resistor R2 because it's measured at this point and referenced to ground. In order to find the voltage drop over resistor R2, we would need the current through resistor R2. We'll call that, <coughs> excuse me, I2. I'm going to label the current through resistor R1 as I1, but we notice that these two resistors are in series, so we're just going to call the current through both of them I, which is equal to I1, which is equal to I2. We assume that no current is drawn here at V out. This is just an ideal measurement device that is measuring the voltage without drawing any current off. We'll talk about ideal and practical voltmeters in a future video. So no real need to apply KCL at this node. This is a trivial node where it's just the current in equals the current out. So if I would like to solve for those currents, I can look at the entire circuit where Vn is equal to I times the equivalent resistance, Req. And in this case, again, you know from a previous video, you have two resistors in series. So that equivalent resistance is just R1 plus R2 because those resistances add in series. That's going to give me I equals Vn over R1 plus R2. Now I have an equation for I, but remember I want the voltage just over resistor R2, V out. So for that, I have Vr2 equals V out, <coughs> excuse me again, which is equal to I R2, so now I can just plug in my expression for I into this equation, and that's going to give me Vn over R1 plus R2 times R2, or we're going to rewrite that in the more common format, V out equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vn. And that is our equation for a voltage divider. So in case, in case it's not really obvious immediately what this equation means or what it does, let's look at the limits or the extreme cases when one resistor is much, much bigger than the other. So for example, in the case where R2 is much, much bigger than R1, you can look at this fraction and see that the value of this fraction is going to approach one. So when R2 gets really, really big and R1 is negligibly small, this fraction effectively becomes R2 over R2, which is just one. So that means we are going to approach V out just equals Vn. So looking at the diagram as the value of this resistor gets really, really big, that kind of pushes V out up towards the input value. Conversely, if R2 is much, much less than R1, then you can look at this fraction and see that this fraction effectively becomes zero. So we have some tiny number over some really, really big number that's going to approach zero. So V out is going to approach zero. Again, as R1 gets really, really big and R2 gets really, really small, you can think of V out as kind of sinking down closer to zero. So this gives you an intuitive sense for how changing those resistor values will change this voltage. And sometimes you'll see voltage dividers in a fixed case, just where you have two fixed resistors. This is 
not necessarily a very efficient way, but it's a very simple and easy way where if you have some high voltage and you need to drop it down to some lower constant voltage, that you can do that simply just with two resistors. Again, that's not the best or the most way, efficient way to do that, but it's a cheap and simple way to do it. Another way that you may see it done is with some variable resistor that acts as a sensor. So there are various types of resistors that change their resistance based on different physical parameters. So for example, a photoresistor is a very common one. This is the symbol for a photoresistor. Its resistance changes based on the amount of light hitting it. So the more light that is hitting this photoresistor, the lower its resistance. And if you wanted to hook that up to something like a microcontroller like an Arduino, well, the Arduino can't, so because you wanted to design a light sensor, say some automatic night light that turns on and off depending on light levels in the room. The Arduino can't measure resistance directly. The Arduino measures voltage. So you can use a voltage divider to convert that changing resistance from the light sensor to a voltage that can be measured by a microcontroller. So again, that are those are two examples of common scenarios where you might see a voltage divider. Another scenario that we'll see in the next video is if you consider the internal resistance of a battery. So, so far we have been talking about batteries as if they are ideal or perfect, but batteries actually have some non-zero internal resistance to them. So when you connect a battery to an external load like a resistor, then you're actually making a voltage divider. You see I have, I drew it a little differently. I drew the resistor above the battery, but that is equivalent to drawing it like this. And again, we have an earlier video about circuit diagrams if you don't understand how these two, video, um, sorry, circuit diagrams are equivalent. But I've made a voltage divider there. So I have this resistance that I can't really ignore. It's part of my battery. So like it or not, when I connect it to an external resistor, I get a voltage divider. And that's what we'll talk about in the next video.